Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary, Amber here. Today we're looking at Matthew 12, one through eight. So I'm gonna read it for you guys. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck the heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. And he said to them, have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of presence, which is not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest? Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. See, the Pharisees had all of these rules about what people could and couldn't do on the Sabbath. And Jesus was breaking the Pharisees' rules for what they deemed was right on the Sabbath, not God's rules. And what the Pharisees were doing is legalism. And that is not what God is about. So Jesus goes in to describe how David ate this bread in the tabernacle that was only for the priest and how the priests have to work on the Sabbath to serve God. Um, and he's telling us this to show that the law was set up to serve and help the people of God, not for the people to have to serve the law, which what the Pharisees were doing. See, God created us to have rest in him, which is why he gave us the Sabbath. Um, but it's for our benefit and to bless us. God created us to work, yes, but he doesn't want us to work seven days a week and constantly be striving for success and achievement and goals and to work ourselves to death. He also created us to have rest and to find that rest in him. But then he goes on to say that Jesus is greater than the temple. See, the law and the temple and the Sabbath all point to Jesus giving us the ultimate rest, eternal spiritual rest. So we don't have to try and strive to follow all these rules to be good enough to earn salvation because that is impossible. We can never be good enough or do enough stuff to earn salvation. Salvation is only through faith in Jesus Christ. See, Jesus did all of the work of salvation for you and I on the cross. So we don't have to do anything. We can't do anything to earn it. It is God's free gift to us. All we have to do is accept God's love and his mercy and his grace for us. He wants to forgive us of all of our sin. And we just have to say, yes, I accept it. And I believe in you, Jesus. And when we have that relationship with Jesus and we know that he is the one that has done the work of salvation and it's not up to us, we can relax and we can breathe and find rest in his goodness and his mercy and grace, knowing that God loved us at our absolute worst. He fully loved you and I at our absolute worst and chose to save us. And so if God loves us at our absolute worst, we don't have to try and strive for salvation. We don't have to strive to keep God happy with us. We don't have to strive to keep us saved. That's all up to Jesus. And he accomplished all of it and said, it is finished and final on the cross. And so we can just rest in God's goodness and his grace, knowing that we are secure in Jesus and his perfect work on the cross. And then Jesus wraps it up by saying, that he desires mercy and not sacrifice. And he said this back in chapter nine as well. And so it's really important if Jesus is repeating the same thing again. See, the sacrifice represents those ritualistic actions that we do, whereas mercy is the heart and character of God. And so Jesus doesn't want us to live life and do things to follow him out of obligation or just to check a box. He wants us to have a deep and intimate relationship with him where we know his heart and get to know who his character is. And so we live and act out of gratitude and love for Jesus, not out of obligation. It's a heart change within us instead of saying, I have to do these things or God's gonna be mad at me. 
like, no, it's I get to do these things because God loves me so much and I'm so thankful for who God is and what he's done in my life. So today, I hope and pray that you choose to rest in Jesus and accept his grace fully for your life. Have a great day.